Hi, about a week ago I released a video about this GDM H3 soldering station and one of the things that we noticed from the review is that this unit is supposed to be rated for 80 watts but the maximum I managed to get out of it using a variety of different cartridges and handpieces was just 40 watts so it really wasn't living up to its claims. And it does beg the question whether I've got a faulty unit or whether that is the design of this unit and they're just lying about specifications. So in today's video, we're going to take this apart again and take some measurements and see what this device is actually capable of. So first of all, let's just have a look at what the resistance of a typical heater is on one of the JBC C245 cartridges. So we'll connect a low resistance meter to the cartridge terminals here. And that reads about 2.7 ohms or so. So we can use our power equation, which is P equals V squared over R. And so we want 80 watts. And we've got a resistance of 2.7 ohms. And if we do the square root of that, that tells us that we need a voltage of at least 14.7 volts from the solder station to be able to deliver 80 watts into one of these cartridges. And if you recall from the previous video, we had a transformer here with two secondary windings. So we've got one pair of windings in blue and one pair of windings in brown. And I've inspected the power PCB once again and the brown windings here only go to this bridge rectifier and then it's DC at that point and goes through the various voltage regulators to power the electronics on the board. So it's the blue windings here that are the ones that are associated with the heater so it basically goes through the current measuring circuit. Then we've got two N-channel MOSFETs, which are set up so that you can switch an AC waveform from a logic signal, and then that goes to the heater. So there's no switching between taps or anything like that. The heater is powered from these two blue wires. So let's have a look at what the voltage is on the secondary. Um, just out of interest, we'll have a look at what the brown wires are first. and that is about 13.6 volts. But then if we look at the blue windings here, which are the ones controlling the heater, the output voltage is about 10.4 volts. So we're never gonna be able to reach that 80 watts anyway. And then if we just I'll try and hold that in there, if I take the handpiece out of the cradle, that actually drops to about 8.7 volts. Now the numbers weren't quite making sense there for a moment. The unloaded voltage for the secondary was 10.38 volts. And then if you plug in the numbers here, you get that kind of 39 watts that we keep seeing on the power monitor down here. But when it was loaded, it dropped to 8.7 volts and that totals about 28 watts. Um, so I took one more measurement, uh, gripping the cartridge slightly tighter with the crocodile clips. That gives us 2.5 ohms. And then also if you notice, the heater isn't actually on at the moment and we're drawing about five or six watts just to have the station powered up so when you add that up that then makes sense so in fact based on the fact that it's drawing about six watts or so in quiescent we actually only have about 33 watts of heating power from this station right we've got the picoscope mso 5000 series connected to the heater terminals on the board here and we've got Picoscope 7 test and measurement up on the PC screen here. So let's have a look at how it actually controls the heater. So I'll take it out the cradle and you'll see it's heating it up. Now interestingly what you're seeing is this trying to heat it at full power but it's actually skipping out pulses in the AC waveform already. We're getting closer to the set point so let's see if the duty cycle decreases. Yeah there's a little bit of a change there. Now it says we're at around 350 here but it's still doing a fair amount of heating there and then it drops off to yeah just some pulses every so often to keep the cartridge warm and if we look at those you can see it's just chopping out bits of the AC waveform it's not doing uh, what you'd expect with sort of a triac control it's just skipping out sections of the AC waveform at the zero, zero crossing point. So we're reducing the losses as far as possible in those MOSFETs by not switching when there's actually current flowing through them. 
So unfortunately it looks like the specifications for this unit are just a complete lie. There's no way that we can get 80 watts out of this solder station with this mains transformer fitted. There doesn't appear to be any fault with the design. It's just that they've lied about the specifications. And I suspect they know full well about this. And also, the other thing is, even if we swapped out the transformer, let's say, for something that could drive more power, there is a power measurement chip on this board here, which is being used to drive the bar graph here. And when we take it out the cradle, it says it's heating it at 100%. So um, they know full well <laughs> that this isn't right, and this is designed for that particular transformer. And we're only able to put about 35 watts, in fact, into one of these cartridges. So hopefully this video has answered a couple of questions that I'm sure people are asking about this unit. Anyway, if you've got any thoughts and comments, don't forget to leave them in the comment section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.